Hello, everybody. This is the first assignment from your Carnegie book. The pages are M388 through M393. Remember, you get to choose if you're going to do the Carnegie book, if you're going to do IXL, or if you're going to do Khan Academy. In the Carnegie book, we should turn to M387 first. We'll do some notes. It says, for the warm-up, rewrite each number as an addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division expression. And so when we think about it, we're like, what? What are you talking about? And so essentially, what it's asking you to do is you're going to need to go through and just say, okay, well, 24, that's pretty easy. We could write that as uh, 25 minus 1 is equal to 24. And half, well, that could be 1 half times 1 is equal to 1 half. Zero could be five minus five equals zero. And 100 could be 1,000 divided by 10 is equal to 100. And so that's just a warm up. This first part, it says write different expressions equal to four. So as an example, I could just say two plus two equals four. Uh, I could say three plus one equals four. I could say four times one equals four. I could say five minus one equals four. I could say four is equal to eight minus four. I could say four is equal to 20 divided by five. All of these are good responses. Number two, now write different expressions equal to four plus five. Well, I know that four plus five is nine. I could also say that four plus five is uh, 4 plus 5 is equal to 5 plus 4. I could say that 4 plus 5 is equal to 8 plus 1. I could say that 4 plus 5 is equal to 8 minus 3 plus negative 1. I could say that 4 plus 5 is equal to 90 divided by 10. Then I could say that 4 plus 5 is equal to 3 times 3. So what can you do for one of the expressions you wrote in equation 1 to make it equal to one of the expressions you wrote in equation 2? So the top one, I have 5. I'm saying, let's use this one. I have 5 plus 1 plus 1. Well, I know from my second section that it already has a 5 in it. I'm sorry, this was 5 minus 1, my bad. And so that's going to be equal to 4. So in these other ones, it's just plus 5. So if I take this plus 5, it'll be equal to any of these that are in here. So I could say 3 times 3. An equation is a statement of equality between two expressions. Um, so notice that we've got two expressions, that's an expression, and that's an expression, and there's an equal sign in between them. So one of the wrong ways to do this would be to say that, well, 8 plus 4 is equal to 12, and then I know that 12 plus 4, right there, 12 plus 5 is 17, so my answer is clearly 17. Well, here's the problem with that. That would give me 8 plus 4 is equal to 17 plus 5. So this expression is 12, and this expression is 21. Those are not the same. On the other hand, Clover did a great job. Uh, I said that 8 plus 4 equals something plus 5, so he rewrote it. And he said that, okay, well, I can do 8 plus 4. And they did minus 1 here and plus 1 here. So really, I haven't changed anything. All I've done, and I've said, okay, well, I added minus 1 and plus 1, and that's still going to be 0. So my total is the same, if that makes sense. And so then I have 7 plus 5 equals blank plus 5. And so clearly, if this is 5 and that's a 5, then the other one just has to be 7. So by adding numbers until we sort of start to look the same, we end up with our solution. So let's look at Fiona. Fiona says I can determine an unknown number, 8 plus 4 equals blank plus 5. 
by writing both expressions. So this person said, okay, I've got a plus four equals, okay, so they took it and they said, there's a four here, so I need to put a four here. So they took five and broke it down. Then they said, there's four and a one, so there's a one here, so I need to put a one here. So they took the eight and they broke it down. So now I have a four and a one, and then there's seven. So now you've noticed like, okay, we've broke it down until I have the exact same section here, and then I've got this extra set. So what is the unknown number in equation eight plus four equals blank plus five? Explain how that makes sense. So one of the things that you can do is you can say, well, clearly we know that a plus four is 12, and I know automatically that that's seven plus five. Okay, so it's what was Riley's error? So if we go back to where Riley was, Riley's error is right here. Riley's error is that he didn't add his side separately. We, he did what they do in elementary school. So Riley is wrong. Riley is wrong because he did not not add the sides separately. So you have to look at the sides and they're two separate problems in a sense, um, as opposed to elementary school where we write things that are sort of fluid. So if we look at Clover and Fiona, Fiona added and she took this chunk and tried to make it equal. If we look at Clover, Clover's over here and he decided, he basically did the same thing. He took this whole chunk and decided to make it equal to that whole thing right there. And so they're similar because they're maintaining equality. They're similar. because the sides do not change weight. So if we think about the side as being how heavy is it? In this case, Fiona, she hasn't changed the weight of the side. All she did was change the numbers. So it's like she had a five pound weight and she broke it down into a four pound weight. Same thing over here with Clover. He didn't change the weight of the sides. He just changed the numbers that are equal to it. So the first and easiest way to do this is just to say, well, 31 plus 67 is equal to what plus 12. And so we say that 31 plus 67 is gonna be eight and 98. And so something plus 12 is 98. So the way I would say is like, okay, well, if this is 98 and I have to have a 12, um, then this could be equal to 86 plus 12, because 86 and 12 is eight and 98. So the other way you could think about it is if I had 31 plus 67 equals blank plus 12, like, I'm going to take this 31, I'm going to break it down. And I'm going to say, let's put a 12 here. And let's put, so if this breaks down, then I've got a 12 and I've got a 31. So if I subtract 12, that's going to give me 20, 19. So 12 plus 19 plus 67. Notice I haven't changed anything. All I did was break it up. So I see this 12 here and I see this 12 here, which means this blank has got to be this box. So 19 plus 67 is gonna be 98 because 19 and 67 is 98. And we're done. So we can check our answers by substituting. So I added these and I got 98 on this side. And if I take uh, 86, my bad, it's not 98, it's 86.
Uh, if I take 86 plus 12, 86 and 12 is going to be 98. And those are equal. Let's look at 2.1. It says find solutions from a set. It says equations can come in many forms because expressions are either numeric or algebraic. Equations can be made of just numbers or numbers and variables. And so one way we can think about them is they can be always true, never true, or sometimes true. So for example, 2 plus 2 equals 3. This is never true. But 2 plus x equals 3. This could be sometimes true. If x is 1, it's true. But if x is 5, it's not true. So it's sometimes true. And then, sometimes it's always true. For example, uh, 6 is equal to 10 to minus 4. You can't change that. It's always the same. So, let's go and look. When you determine that an equation is never true, you can make it a true statement by using a symbol not true. So, for example, 10 equals 20 should be written as 10 is not equal to 20. Write at least five different kinds of equations using the list of expressions given. So, let's look. Uh, I have 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. So that is a true equation. Then I could have 0 plus 8 is equal to 8. So that's the identity property of addition. And then I could have 2x plus 2 could be equal to Mm, zero. Sometimes. Sometimes not. Uh, then I could have 3x could be equal to 2x. That could be sometimes true. If x was zero, then there'd be 3 times zero equals 3 times 2 times zero, which is also zero. And then I could have 2x plus 2 could be equal to 2 parentheses x plus 1. And this is going to be always true, because if you distribute, they're equivalent. So again, five different types of equations. So this is true, a t for always true. 0 plus 8 is always that, always true. 2x plus 2 could be sometimes 0, if this was like a negative 1, 2 times negative 1 plus 2. So this is uh, sometimes true. This is sometimes true. And then this is always true. So I don't have any never true examples. All right. A says write an equation with variables that has no possible solution. Explain why the equation has no solution. Well, what I would do is I would say something like, well, I could have 2x is equal to 2x. That's true all the time. Doesn't matter what I do. But if I put a 1 on it, this will always be, this side will always be one more than the other side because they're the same, except this side has one more. So they are the same, except one is one more than the other. The right expression is always one more than the left expression. B says write an equation with variables that is true no matter what. So I could say something like 4x equals 4x. These are the same, and they'll always be the same. I could also say something like 4x equals 2, parentheses, 2x. These will multiply, and this will still be 4x 